Okay, this will be the uh, last segment that we do on active and passive transformations. But this one will be interesting because it will give you a really deep insight into exactly what's going on here. Um, I want to just give you a couple more facts about um, these two active and passive transformation matrices. And then I want to um, use these uh, matrices um, to transform a one of the Cartesian unit vectors. Just to give us an idea of what happens um, in each case. So to begin with, um, here are our two transformation matrices, active and passive. You see they differ um, slightly in their form, which we would expect because they are not um, the same. What you should remember, um, though, is that A, P, the two transformations uh, compounded, is the same thing as PA, which is the identity matrix. We showed that before, and it's easy to prove if you um, put these two matrices together and, and go through the matrix multiplication, you will get the identity. So that's what we expect. Um, what I would like to show, though, is that if we take the active matrix and we substitute minus theta in, what do we get? So this chimes in with what we were doing in the previous video. Well, we get cosine of minus theta minus sine of minus theta and sine of minus theta cosine of minus theta. Okay. Um, which, if you um, know your trigonometric identities, works out to be cosine theta, because cosine of minus theta is the same as cosine theta. Um, sine of minus theta is minus sine theta, but because there's a minus there already, we get back regular sine theta. Sine of minus th uh, theta is minus sine theta and cosine theta again. So what you see is that substituting minus theta into the active uh, matrix gives you the passive matrix, which is the same thing as the inverse. Okay, so the inverse active transformation is the same as the passive transformation, is the same as um, substituting minus theta for theta. Okay, uh, one other thing I want to show is that I want to find out what A transpose is. So if you remember, we covered it briefly once before, but transpose means and make the rows into columns and the columns into rows. What do you get if you do that? So if I take this matrix A here and I take the first row and I make that into a column, I get cosine theta minus sine theta. And I take the second row here and make that into a column. I get sine theta, cosine theta. So if you look at this transpose A, it's the same as P. So if the transpose of A is the same as P, but P is the same as the A inverse, that means that A transpose is the same as A inverse. Now this is something we will be looking at again, but it's quite an important result. It actually shows that this is an, ortho uh, an orthogonal linear transformation, which is something that's extremely important in all sorts of branches of physics, not to mention mathematics. Okay, so let's, um, let's move on to something slightly different. What I want to do is take a look at this scenario here. So 
what we have is we have um, a unit vector i hat okay the unit vector i hat so in both these situations i'm going to be concentrating on the unit vector i hat and then the unit vector i hat is at uh, a point one zero one along the x-axis zero up the y-axis so this is x this is y so in this first instance we're going to do an active transformation remember an active transformation is taking the object itself the vector in this case and transforming it while keeping the coordinate system the same and the transformation I'm going to choose now is a rotation but a rotation specifically of 90 degrees so a 90 degree rotation that's an act actively moving I hat up here 90 degrees so it sits on the y-axis okay in that case taking our um, matrix um, for an active transformation or indeed the original equation um, that governs this transformation they're equivalent um, I can work out uh, given the the um, the angle which is 90 degrees I can work out um, the precise transformation but before I look at that I just want to concentrate briefly on this um, on this second example here so in this second example I'm going to do a passive transformation so the vector i hat which is at one zero it stays in place but what happens instead is that the actual coordinate systems the coordinate system itself rotates by 90 degrees so the whole x-axis moves over here and the whole y-axis moves over here so this is now a projection of the x-axis and this is the new y-axis okay so this vector i hat stays in the same position but the entire coordinate system rotates 90 degrees Okay, and that's also governed by our transformation matrix or our trans transformation um, equations. So, if we take theta equals 90 and our beginning um, point is the, the point uh, 1, 0, and we perform the transformation, what do we get? Well, we substitute x equal to 1, theta is 90 degrees, and y is 0. And if we do that, we find that the point 1, 0 transforms to the point 0, 1. So 1, 0 moves to 0, 1. If we go back up and look at our diagram, you'll see that that is in, indeed the case. The point 1, 0 has transformed to the point 0, 1 still in the same coordinate system using the exact same coordinates so i hat has moved up here to occupy the point there zero one rather than one zero in the passive case though in the passive case making the substitution that theta is 90 and our x y is still one zero if we substitute those values in we find that the point one zero transforms under a passive transformation to the point zero minus one. Zero minus one. So if we come up and look at our diagram, this vector i hat has not changed, but because the coordinate system has rotated 90 degrees, this new x-axis it's zero along this x-axis doesn't go up this x new x-axis at all okay 
but it's minus 1 along the new y-axis. Okay, so we expect that you would get 0 minus 1. And the difference is that in this scenario here, the coordinate system has not changed, the basis vectors have not changed, whereas in this passive case, the coordinate system itself has rotated, and so the axes have changed, and the basis vectors have changed. Therefore, the coordinates in that new basis have changed. This is all a bit complicated, but um, I think with this concrete example, things become a little clearer.